Hello everyone, today is May 7th, 2024. I am going to call this video, Let's Sash It. So we recently ended a sampler sew along um, and there was a question about sashing once all the blocks were completed and how you go about sashing. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I am not an expert. I have been quilting for a very short time, just a few years, and I have learned techniques from watching other YouTube creators, as well as reading those patterns and picking up a few tricks that work for my brain along the way. It may not work for you, and that is fine, but hopefully somebody will learn something from this. Now, the blocks I have in front of you are actually my sampler samples. Many of them are blocks that I made either to sample one of my EQ8 patterns or they were just extra and i want to put them in a quilt so it is going to be a scrappy quilt and in order to break up the scrappiness and give it some kind of cohesion i'm going to sash this and i am going to sash this with cornerstones utilizing this fabric here now i'm not going to do that on this tutorial because I do not have the space, I do not have the video equipment to do that on such a large scale. And it would get awfully boring to just watch me sew squares together. But I will do a short video just showing from beginning to end and the completed project, project along the way. So I am going to pause here for a minute and when we come back or when I come back, it will probably be easier if you view the next portion on your full screen, if you are able. So I will be right back as I set up for the session video. Okay, so I've set it for this and I'm really trying not to get into the frame of the video because it's early in the morning um, and no one wants to look at all of this. But I simply, for my sample, my little tutorial here, is I have some five inch squares that I pulled out of a charm pack and the reason, and I chose nine. And the reason why I chose nine is because we have our four corners and we have a middle row and a center. So this would be an easy version because you're just going to complete the same process throughout the whole quilt. Now I have different color fabrics and I have decided I wanted to break it up. Now I would not have chosen this green, but I chose this green for the tutorial so it would stand out. This is probably the easiest method is my five inch squares requires a five inch strip. And I have made my strip one and a half by five inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew those units together as a row. And I'm going to complete that with each row. I'm just going to sew that strip right down. And then I'm going to join my row. So I'm going to, once th this row is done, I'm going to sew this on and this on. And then we would have a completed quilt. And we are simply going to go ahead, do the same size border or the same size strip for the width of your quilt and sew that on just like this and your quilt would be completed okay but now so that's really that's really easy it's basic i think you would be able to follow along with that 
there are going to be a few tips that I give you along the way in a few shorts, not a video, but in a few shorts. But so you're just doing the length. So if you're working on your 12 and a half inch squares, you are going to make a 12 and a half inch strip and then determine how wide you want that to be. So you can do two and a half by five, um, 12 and a half inch strip. Maybe you have a solid jelly barrel lying around and you don't want to cut some yardage. I am going to mention that when you are making sashing, it does require a lot of yardage. So you're going to want to determine how big your quilt is and you want at least two yards of fabric because you don't want to run out if you make a mistake. So this is an easy method. Now what I'm going to show you is a cornerstone method. And I'm going to pause this video so I can set that up. All right, so now I have set up my pretend quilt to with cornerstones. I want to sash with cornerstones. And again, this is a very easy, I do not want you to be intimidated by it because we're just sewing rows together. We're sewing our blocks and then we're sewing our rows. So but we're still working with our five inch nine patch. I've included my one and a half inch by five inch strips or rectangles. And I've included as the cornerstone a one and a half inch square. Now these are just scrap one and a half inch squares that I cut up and eventually I sewed together for a project. But if you break it down like this, you can see that you would just sew this together however you're comfortable. You can sew it by row, or you can choose to sew this unit to this and this to this with the quarter inch seam, and then sew this, this, and this together and make a block. And you're just going to connect it like that. Now, how I would personally sew it is I would sew this together, these two together, and this together. Then I would sew this together and connect that to, to that block and repeat the process. But it is how your brain works. So you just determine if it's easier to sew by row, sew by column, make it a block. You can make it into little patches, however you want to do it. Now, you will have to pin and you will have to nest those corners, but it makes for a very, very pretty finish. And as you can see, it just adds a little bit of extra, something extra when you add the cornerstone. Totally not necessary. Um, you can do it the first way. Your fabric colors and choices will match a little better. But let's say that you do not want to make a cornerstone block. So I'm going to move that. And you do not want to make an entire row. You're, you may not want to make an entire row like we did on the first example. And you just want to work with a block. So what you can do alter is make your five inch squares, sew these together, and then just cut another strip for the top. In this case, it would be seven and a quarter. So once it's sewn together, that top strip would be seven and a quarter. The only thing you want to remember is that you're not going to double your strips to make your block. So lay out 
you lay out your blocks, lay out your patterns, determine how you want to sew it. And I'm going to put that back. Cornerstones back there. Someone extra to So when you're doing cornerstones, do not be intimidated when you're doing sashing. It is just another block. View it as another block. The block is just going to be a little bigger. And obviously your finished book is going to be a little bigger. Now when you're using your 8 inch blocks or your 10 inch blocks or your 12 and a half inch blocks, you're not going to have as much sashing to see. But this is on a smaller scale. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you sash. And I think I lost the cornerstone. But um, what it looks like when you sash. And that's two options. And again, as I said that I will do short little snippet videos when I am putting my quilt together. So you can see how I've chosen to sash mine and finish my blocks. And then I will do a video, not necessarily basting the quilt. I, I just do not have the ability to do that. But I will show a basted quilt and how I, the two methods I use to complete quilting it. If you are going to do it by yourself on your domestic machine. So there you go. If you have any questions, I do have a Zoom that is coming up at the end of June. I'm not doing a Zoom this month because of the Memorial Day weekend. But in June, if you would like to join me, just go ahead, send me an email, and we can talk about sashing there. So this is just a short tutorial. I hope I did not confuse you very much. I will see you next time. As always, be blessed, be kind, and keep sewing.